My name is Iqbal Fauzi Rahmat and I'm going to discuss about building information system from Lauren's book, the 13th chapter. If you're wondering, I'm using this picture over here, people jumping around or jumping together. And the title is building information system. If you're wondering whether it's in line, whether it's, it's match or not, well, I'm going to tell you why in the next slide. Okay, because when we are building a new information system, when we design a new information system, we are redesigning the organization. So it's not just about application, it's not just about the technology, it's not just about the software, but it's about people, it's about the organization, how it will change, how they interact with, with each other will change, how the business process will change, how they communicate with each other will change when we build a new information system. Okay, so what are we going to discuss about uh, in this topic, in this chapter? We're going to discuss about five topics. One is how does building new systems produce organizational change? What are the core activities in the systems development process? What are the principal methodologies for modeling and designing systems? What are alternative methods for building information systems? What are new approaches for system building in the digital firm era? For the top one, the, for the top three, I will discuss about those things. And then for the bottom one, will be discussed by my colleague. Okay, so let's talk about the first topic. How does building new system produce organizational change? Well, actually there are four categories of organizational change, which is automation that carries low risk and low return, and then rationalization, redesign, paradigm shifts, which carries high risk and high return. I will discuss each one of these in the next slide. Okay, for the first one, automation. Automation is when we are performing the organization task more efficiently and effectively. So imagine for this case, I'm using as a zoo in this case. For example, if you go to the zoo, now you have to go in line and then buy the ticket from the counter, from the ticket counter, and then get the ticket. They printed out the ticket and get the ticket. Now imagine if for that process, for getting the ticket, it is automated through a website. You register to that website and then you schedule for where you are, where, when you are going to arrive at the zoo and then you print it out yourself and then go to the zoo. So that's the process of automation. So you make it very easy for people to access that part. So when I'm telling you it's easy doing uh, building a system, I remember one person said, a very famous person, Bill Gates, as you all know, he said that I will always choose a lazy person to do a difficult job because he will find an easy way to do it. I don't know if you understand the, what he is saying or not, but that makes sense. I mean, I'm a lazy person. I would like to make things easy for me. I don't want to be bothered by anything else. I just want the system to be very easy and efficient. That's why if you are building a new system, you have to make sure that it's very easy and everyone can use it. It's as if even a lazy person can do it themselves. Okay, the next one is rationalization. It's simplifying its business process for specific function. For example, instead of having a person, a zoo staff, for example, scanning the barcode from your ticket, from your printed ticket, we could have a machine that will scan that ticket and then the zoo gate will open and you can enter that uh, zoo, for example. That's rationalization. And then the next one is redesign. It requires a new vision of how the process is to be organized. For example, during this pandemic, you can't go to the zoo, for example. So what you need to do is just uh, watch zoo on a smartphone, for example. It's redesigning the business process. I designed this simple business process to make it easier to, for you to understand what I mean by redesigning the business process. Okay, imagine if it's the current system, you go to the zoo, you wait in line, and then whether the ticket is available or not, if not, you have to wait again, and then if it's available, you go strolling through the zoo and then going home. And during that time, the zoo staff will accompany you, accompany the visitors, and then later on, we clean up the zoo. Now imagine if you are redesigning the business process. You just go to the website, log in, and then if it's passed, you browse through the live videos, for example. So instead of 
uh, having a zoo staff to guide you through all that, you only have a website. So that will change, that will design the business process. And the last one is the paradigm shifts. It involves rethinking the nature of the business and the nature of the organization. So this carries high risk, but also will carry high return. It carries high risk because people might not want to use virtual uh, reality camera, for example, for going to the zoo. They just want to smell it. But it also carries high return. Imagine if you don't need to go to the zoo and if there are no zoo, you can save a lot of money for not having to maintain all those several acres of land for having a zoo and then cages and then the animal food etc so it will cost it will save a lot of money and in the uh, client side you don't need to go to the zoo you just put in your uh, virtual reality camera but as i mentioned before the this paradigm shift will carry high risk and also high return Okay, the next part is what are the core activities in the system development process? There are actually six core activities in building information system. One is system analysis and then system design, programming, testing, conversion, production, and maintenance. I will discuss each one of these in the following slide. For the system analysis, what we are doing in this phase is we define the problem and then identifying its causes specifying the solution and identifying the information requirements. This is during the system analysis. For example, we define the problem that we have a low connective or a low rate of uh, people coming to the zoo and we identify its causes because of the pandemic and then specifying the solution. We are going to use a live video camera, for example, to go streaming and then identifying the information requirements, what are needed to build that system. And after that, it's the system design, how the system will fulfill the objective. So we have these objectives during the system analysis, and then we design how the system will meet that objective during this system. It is not coding, but it's only putting what are the objective and then how we can achieve that objective using the system. And then after that, it's the actual programming itself. The system specification that we created during the uh, system uh, design will be translated into software program code. This is where we actually uh, code, where we actually build the uh, system. And then the next one is testing. After the development, the coding, the programming is done, we do the testing. It is an exhaustive and thorough testing to ascertain whether the system produces the right results. So we do testing and testing and testing to make sure that it met the objective. Then the next one is after it is being tested, there is a conversion. It's a process of changing from the old system to the new system. There are four, uh, four strategy for this conversion. The first one is parallel strategy, where the old system is also working together with the new system in the same time, that's parallel strategy. And then we have direct cut over strategy. It's when we set up a certain date when are we going to stop using the old system and start using the new system? And then the third one, it's pilot study strategy. So instead of the whole department is using uh, this new system, there is only one department. For example, we'll use the system first, and then if it's successful, it will go to the whole organization. And then the last one, it's phased approach strategy. So instead of having the whole system fully implemented, we are only going to implement it uh, function by function, for example. So we are going to test it uh, certain function first and then going to the next function and then going to the next function until all function is done being converted. And the last one is production and maintenance. So after it is installed, after the system is installed and the conversion is completed, we correct the errors and improve efficiency. So during this time, we want to make sure that the system is running well and that all users are accepting this uh, new system. So during this maintenance time, it will be divided, mostly it will be divided into these three parts. One is debugging, where you fix the code for uh, errors. It uh, probably will take about 20%. And then changing data, files, reports, hardware, system, software, it's 20%. And what the most part is probably the user enhancements, that's 60% of the time. So what I meant by user enhancements is that 
as a user, they might find the system probably too complicated for them. And then we provide how the user will interact to it more efficiently. So they provide feedback to us and then we enhance the user experience for them. That will take the most time. So the more it is easy, the more it is user friendly, the more it is efficient for the user, the more the system will be used throughout the organization. So that part will take the most of the maintenance time. So the next topic is what are the principal methodologies for modeling and designing systems? There are actually three methodologies that I'm going to discuss here. The first one is structured methodologies, where it is a step by step, each step building on the previous one. So, for example, the visitor will do the purchasing and then login, etc., the admins. So it will be structured. It's the data flow diagram that we structure from one data to the other uh, data. And the next one is object oriented development. It is not structured, but it is based on object. So it is based on class and inheritance and uses object as basic unit of system analysis and design. So instead of having a structure that goes step by step, we could develop the object, each object differently, and then they will interact with each other later on. And then the last part is computer aided software engineering. It's a software tools to automate the methodologies, uh, the, uh, the one that we are using. For example, in this Kamunda, we could design a business process and then Kamunda will tell us, will simulate which one will have bottleneck in the, the data processing, for example. The red one is the one that is currently uh, has highest traffic. And then the green one is obviously the most efficient one that will not have a lot of uh, traffic. So the computer will aid us in the system design and building the system. Okay, so that's it for those three topics. So thank you for your attention. And I'm going to hand it over to our colleague here, Mr. Taslim Kalam. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.